All right, uh, so we're going to begin this webinar. Uh, thank you and welcome to uh, the Meaningful Use Coaching Webinar hosted by MTVC. And uh, basically, uh, this is uh, part of our October project. It's uh, basically a two-part series on meaningful use and how to attest to meaningful use using our MTBC's web EHR. Uh, this is actually the second part, but don't worry if you didn't attend the first part. You can go online to mtbc.com and access the first part of this series on, uh, online by clicking on the resources tab and I believe the webinars link. Um, the first part of the series actually taught uh, listeners on the 15 core measures and the second part of the series I, be I believe will teach us on the 10 menu measures of meaningful use. Uh, this webinar is going to work slightly different from the webinars in the past. Uh, you will hear me chiming in while our MU coaches actually start teaching their meaningful use uh, menu measures. Um, let me try to go to the next page here. And I guess I'll begin with the introduction of me. Uh, I'll introduce myself and we'll go ahead and introduce the MU coaches as well. Uh, my name is uh, Praveen Kanda. I'm the Director of Intellectual Property and Innovation for MTBC and our, our goal is to make MTBC into a, a leader in providing products and services that would really show our innovation in the healthcare IT community and, and improve uh, doctors and patients' experience using healthcare IT. Also joining me are Muhammad Farhan and Kashif Mahmood, uh, both experienced uh, MU coaches at MTBC and have been with MTBC since, I believe, 1999. So uh, Kashif uh, or Mahmood or Farhan, if you uh, take it over right now, that would be great. And uh, I guess they'll begin introducing themselves and begin talking. All right, thank you, Praveen. Okay. All right. Um, so in today's webinar, we'll show you how you can actually meet the meaningful use measures by using the MTBC certified EHR, as Praveen has mentioned. Um, and this, uh, by using the MTBC EHR, you can actually qualify for the incentive. We have been talking about this in the past, and we. Um, so, we'll, before we get into the details, let me first begin by telling you that you have joined this session on the GoToWebinar service. You can see a GoToWebinar panel on the right hand side of your screen. Um, this service allows you to ask questions using the, the, the panel. Now if you need to minimize the panel or get it out of the way, you can use the, um, the arrow that is pointing towards the right hand side of your screen. This will minimize the panel and will allow you to see the screen as much as possible. If you want to ask a question at any time, there is a question a section of the, of the, of the service. Open up the, the, the section, enter your question, and we'll try to answer all of your questions at the time they're asked or at the end of the session when there is time for question and answers. If you were not able to get to your question during this webinar, we will we'll respond to you by email. Let me also tell you uh, a little bit about MTBC. We have been in business since 1999, and we have clients in the 35 unique specialties in 43 states across the country. We have more than 1,200 employees, and we have 24 by 7 operations. That allows 24 by 7 technical support as well for any of our services or software. For the last three years, we have been among a Deloitte Technology Fast 500 companies, this means that we are one of the fastest growing companies in the country and specifically when it comes to the healthcare, we are one of the fastest growing companies in our sector. We are a Microsoft certified gold partner. We are also an Inc. 500 uh, and 5000 company for the last two years. All of our software and all of our services are short script certified. This is for the electronic prescriptions and it allows our company and all of our applications from EHR to our website to iPhone and Android applications to send prescriptions to more than 65,000 
pharmacies across the country. All of our EHR applications are ONC certified, which means that they will surely help you to um, um, achieve the meaningful use incentive. As you previously discussed, that using our certified EHR um, can actually qualify you to earn a maximum of $44,000 Medicare incentive, but you have to start utilizing it in a meaningful way on or before the October 3rd, 2012. This is because it is the last year to earn the maximum incentive, and if you further delay it, the maximum amount will be reduced to 39000 and finally $24,000 um, in the year 2014, as you can see it in the image right now. Also, it is not only about earning the incentive. Medicare will also uh, start penalizing the eligible professionals if they do not start using certified EHR for the purpose of meaningful use after 2014. So it is, it is important for all the providers to start use, using the certified EHR this year. Also, um, as we have discussed in our previous uh, seminar, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I just, uh, I just wanted to ask you a question. Uh, is there a due date to be eligible for the full amount of benefits right now? Is, is that sometime this year? Well, they can start utilizing it um, uh, before October 3rd, which means they have to start their reporting period, which is for 90 days. Uh, uh -huh. As soon as they, they finish their reporting period and submit their attestation with a with a Medicaid or Medicaid, they will receive the incentive within four to eight weeks, which is the you know the maximum time frame. Okay. So they only have to start utilizing the EHR in a meaningful way this year, and once they have actually uh, finish the reporting period and submitted the attestation, Medicare will start their payment cycle and uh, the payment will be issued within four to eight weeks. Okay, okay, that, that, that makes sense to me. Okay, continue. All right, so um, as we have also dis discussed in our previous webinars that uh, earning the meaningful use incentive uh, requires eligible provi providers to meet a minimum set of objectives which are the theme core or mandatory objective, you could say, and 10 many objectives, of which a provider has to choose five. These together are going to make you a meaningful user. In our previous webinars, uh, we talked about how to achieve the meaningful use core measures, for which the video is also available on our website. Um, and today, we will be covering the menu measures, and we'll show you how easily you can meet the requirements by using MTBC certified EHR. I will now hand over the mic to Cash, who is going to walk you through the meaningful use menu measures in the MTBC EMR. So here we go. Right, once again, thank you very much, everyone, for joining this webinar. My name is Cash, and I'll just go ahead and I'll show you how you can basically meet the menu measures by using our certified EHR. Now on your screen you can see by many of means uh, the requirements that are optional for the providers. Now you can see a set of 10 many measures, uh, but the requirement is that an eligible professional should only adopt five of them. Now apart from those five, uh, the immunizations, registry submissions, and syndromic surveillance submission, these are the two functionalities which a provider must adopt uh, one of them. And from the rest of eight, the choice is for four. So the provider just have to select four additional menu measures out of these eight. Now shortly, I will be just showing you how you can achieve those uh, measures by using our EHR. Now, let me just switch over to our software, where I will uh, show you how you can basically look for this report, how you can go for those measures, and how you can meet them by using a EHR. All right, so now I am switched over to our EHR, certified EHR. Now the first thing over here would be to look for your uh, meaningful use calculator or your tracker. 
uh, we have a built-in tracker that will just show you your progress, how far you're done with your meaningful use progress. Now, in order to pull that report, you just have to go to the reports tab that you can see right at the top. And you just have to go down to uh, the option which says Meaningful Use Calculator. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on Meaningful Use Calculator. Now here, like uh, we already have mentioned, that the Meaningful Use reporting period is 90 consecutive days. So the first thing in this tracker or in this calculator would be to look for your 90 days. So for instance, my 90 days started since June 1st and uh, to date. And then if you have multiple providers within a single EHR, you also have uh, the option to have more than one providers within a single EHR. You just have to select the provider's name. And then you have to calculate to see how much you have achieved uh, the meaningful use points. Now once I use the calculate, it will show me my overall progress, how far I am done with my meaningful use, what are the points that I still have to work, and what are those that I already have fulfilled the requirement. Now on your screen, the points that you can see which are in green color, those are the ones that I already have met. You can also see that we can see two different sections. One is core and the other one is the menu option. In the last webinar, we covered the core points. So in today's webinar, we will be starting over with the menu. And uh, at the bottom, you can see the menu options. Now starting with, uh, from menu number 9 and menu number 10, which is the Immunizations Registry Data Submission or Syndromic Surveillance Data Submission, these tools are basically the functionality of our EHR. Uh, basically, what the requirement is that your EHR should have a capability to submit uh, either your Immunizations Registries or your Syndromic Surveillance electronically to uh, the local public health agency in your state or, uh, you know, uh, the local health body within your state. And since this is in terms of the interface which is built with those uh, agencies, once the interface is built within the local body in your area, a test should be performed, and that will meet the requirement for uh, this measure. So you can say that this is something, I mean, out of these two points, the provider only has to opt one of them, I suppose if you're going for the registries, uh, it is something that you don't have to worry about because MTBC Interface Department takes care of these two measures for you. And at the back end, whenever you are doing the immunizations or syndromic surveillance, at the back end, the interface team is performing those tests and are being submitted to uh, the local agencies in your area. So from here, I'll start over with the major number one, the many major number one. So I, I just have a question, uh, uh, Cash, if you have a minute. I just have a question. So you're telling me that both the data submission for the immunization and syndromic survey is taken care of by MTB's EHR, correct? That's so then right. I mean, since what, what, what would the physician have to do on his end to make sure these tests are taken care of or he doesn't have to do anything and just be part of web EHR, our, our EHR services? Yeah, basically, at the back end, there's a file generated which is submitted electronically to uh, the local agencies. So what we can do is we can share that file. But like I said, then since it will be sent in the electronic format, which is the computer-readable format, so the provider actually doesn't have to do anything uh, fulfilling this requirement. If they are doing the immunizations, that's fine. They can go for that. But if there is a provider who doesn't do the immunizations, also a provider also, you know, uh, does not do the syndromic surveillance, then they can also go for an exclusion. So oh. it's, it's something which is about the interface or the functionality, and it, it does not depend on the usage of this EHR. Oh, okay. All right. Uh -huh. okay. All right, continue. <laughs> okay, not a problem. And uh, uh, like we said that all attendees are uh, in a listen mode only. If you have any questions, you can type it right now. You can see the panel at your right-hand side. You can simply type in your questions and uh, we can uh, simply answer to them when we will have the question and answers. Okay. Now, Session starting with, end. yeah, at the end of this uh, webinar. All right, so starting with uh, menu measure number one, which is 
drug formulary checks. Now, let's have a look what the requirements are, what are the objectives, and uh, how we can actually meet them. Now, at the front of every measure, you can see this question mark or a detail. Now, whenever we talk about functionality, you can simply see the question mark. But if there's something that a provider must provide the data structure data in this EHR, you can also see the details. Details will have a patient's name, whatever patients you have seen during the 90 days reporting period, you will have the patient's name under the details tab. I'll just show you later on when we'll be covering uh, the other the points. Now over here, the objective is to implement drug formulary checks. And the measure is that the eligible professional has enabled this functionality during the EHR reporting period. Also, you can see there's an exclusion, which is an, a provider who writes fewer than 100 prescriptions during the EHR reporting period uh, can simply you know, go for an exclusion for this point. Now, drug formularies are directly implemented in the MTBC EHR at the time of e-prescribing. So let's go ahead and open up a patient's record and send a prescription to see how this requirement can be met. In order to open up a patient, first of all, we need to go to the patient search option that you can see at the top left corner of your screen. So I'll simply click on this patient search, and then you just have to type in the last name, or if you need to change your search, you can even type in the first name or any of these details, and then you just have to click on search. So this search tab will bring up the patient's name in front of you, and you just have to double click on the patient's name. Once I'm in the patient's record, I'll be going into the clinical summaries of this patient by clicking on the charts. And I'll open up a chart, or if I'm working for a new data service, I'll create a new chart. Then within this chart, I will go down to the plan of care. And here we will click into the medicine section that you can see right over here. So once I click on this medical, uh, medicine uh, section, this system will show me if there is any benefit plan for this patient. Uh, since I'm using this demo, so I just uh, will be showing you some screenshots of that screen. So you can see that, just bear with me, let me bring up that window in front of you. So I will just show you a benefit plan. If you wish to go with that, you just have to uh, click on that. And then it will show you all of your uh, drugs that will have those formulary checks within this EHR. So since we are talking about the functionality of this EHR, that will be a built-in feature within this EHR. All right, so let me switch over to the screen. All right, so for instance, if I'm looking for any medicine, I will simply bring it up from here. And once you're going to click on it for e-prescribing, you will see all the formulary checks in front of you. That will be the functionality of this EHR. So like, like I mentioned that this is something we're talking about, the functionality of this EHR. And at the back end, this EHR will be showing you all the formulary checks for any of the drugs that you will be prescribing. So, uh, um, Tash, if you just want to just clarify this. Mm -hmm. So basically all you need to do is just simply enter in the medicine once you go to the patient claims or okay, place patient charts, and the formulary checks are entered in automatically, correct? That, that's right. I mean, uh, like I just showed you those uh, two screens, once you're just going to type in your medicine, uh, as soon as you're going to search for any of these medicines, you just have to, you know, double click on uh, the medicine's name. Yeah. Yeah. And then it will be simply bringing up all these formulary checks in front of you. Uh -huh. where you just have to select, uh, you know, uh, the relevant medicine, and you can simply prescribe it electronically to 
any pharmacy. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right, so let me just uh, go back to my UTR. So this is how you can take care of your first major, which was drug formula checks. And you can see under the required value, it's coming as enabled. This means that we are talking about a functionality which is already enabled within this EHR. That's a built-in feature. Now the next major, which is many major number two, lab results. And let's have a look what are the requirements for this major. Now the objective is incorporate clinical lab test results into EHR as structured data. And uh, the major is that more than 40% of clinical lab test results should be entered as structured data format into the EMR. And also you can see there's an exclusion, which is a provider who does not order any lab test results or results that are not in a negative or positive or nomadic format during the EHR reporting period can go for an exclusion. Now here what the structured data is, basically it does not need to be electronically exchanged to meet this point. Individual numeric data values assigned to each lab result can also fulfill the requirement. Now let's have a look how that uh, measure can be met by using our certified EHR. Again, the first thing you have to do is to look for your patients to which you need to uh, perform a lab test order and simply double click on the patient's name. Then we will go into the clinical section of this patient's account by clicking on the charts. Uh, the charts tab you can see at the top where you can see those sub options. So I'll click on the charts and I'll open up the chart or if I'm working on a new data service I'll create another chart. Then we need to go down to the plan of care and the plan of care you will be able to see the lab options at the right hand side of your screen uh, within this EHR. So once I'm going to click on the lab let me just go ahead and uh, do that. So once I'll be clicking on the lab, you will have all the results in front of you that will be showing you in terms of their dates. You can also see the ranges or units, whatever the test was performed, what results we have received electronically because we can have the interface done with the local labs in your area. and. Uh, through electronic submission, you will have this information in front of you. Again, that's a functionality that an interface that will be created later on once this EHR gets installed on the provider's computer. The next step is uh, from the provider's end, they just need to inform their local lab uh, to check if the lab qualifies for electronic setup with MTBC EHR or not. Because if you talk about EHR, uh, it already has the functionality to uh, you know, to create the interfaces with different labs. We already are working with various labs within, within the country. So in case if there's any lab which is not already included in our built-in feature, our interface team can work with you, can, you know, uh, schedule the calls with your local lab and perform different lab results. And depending on that electronic exchange of data, we can also build uh, an interface with your, your lab. So let me just go back to my meaningful use calculator. So we were talking about uh, the measure number two, menu item. So you know, in this simply easiest way, you can create the interface and you can keep on posting your lab test results electronically. Uh, once again, let me just remind you that uh, although you can see 10 menu measures, but you only have to go for uh, five of them. But the, uh, the condition is that for many number nine, that is the immunizations, registries, submission, and syndromic surveillance submission, your EHR should have the functionality or the capability to uh, submit those information to the local health department within your area. And it's, it's, it's one or the other, right? So for M09 and M10, it's one or the other, correct? 
Uh, that's right. That's the, yeah. one or the other. Okay. All right. Thank you. Not a problem. All right. So I'm just going to go down to the major number three, which is generate patient lists. And let's have a look what the requirements are. Now, the objective is to generate a list of patients by specific conditions for quality improvements or uh, research or outreach. And the measure is to generate at least one report during the EHR reporting period, which is going to be a 90 days reporting period. And for this measure, there are no exclusions. So here, the specific conditions are those conditions that are part of the active patient's problems list or their current assessments. Now, when we talk about the attestation, the requirement would be simply yes or no. You will see the options that yes, you have generated a list, or no, you have not generated any list of uh, any specific conditions. Now, as a healthcare provider, you're in the best position to decide what type of report is important for you to generate. And the report that you, you will be generating can cover all the patients whose records are maintained uh, in the EHR. Uh, they can be also helpful to provide them some educational material or to call them back in the office, uh, you know, or, or maybe to do a survey of their current conditions. Now let's take a look how such report can be generated by using MTBC certified EHR. And this is one of uh, the great features of MTBC EHR that uh, it has such defined reporting capabilities. So if you want to pull up any report, you just have to go at the top where you can see the reports tab. I'm just going to highlight it. So I'll simply click on the reports, and then I'll go down to the dynamic report where we'll be bringing up or we will be populating a report with certain specific conditions. Now, this report allows you to quickly and easily create reports for any criteria that you're choosing. Uh, that report includes patients' demographics, patient insurances, procedures, assessments, vital signs, allergies, alerts, and many other clinical information that you will be entering in this EHR. So let's go ahead and build up a report. And uh, you just have to find a field that you wish to include in that report. Uh, for instance, I will be grabbing the first name. I just have to double click on the first name that I can see at my left hand side. And you can see that this will be populated in my selected fields. I will also look for the last name, maybe the date of birth. I also need to have the age, the gender. And in case if I need to make a call, I also need to have maybe the home phone number or the cell phone number. And then I'll scroll down and I'll look for uh, the diagnosis description. that I can find under this list. Right, so here I can see my diagnosis description since I need to build up a report depending on certain specific conditions. So I'll double click on this diagnosis description. Now once you have selected your fields, you can also further put a filter within these fields. But for instance, I need to pull up a report for those patients that has diabetes alert. So what I'll do is I'll simply right click on this diagnosis description and I'll click on the filter. Then within this filter option, I will select, let's suppose, contains. And we're looking for something diabetes. And then I'll hit the Add button, and I'll hit OK. So once we are done with your filters, once you are done with the selection of your fields, the last thing in order to populate the report would be to click on this Populate button that you can see at the bottom of your screen. So I'll simply go ahead and I'll click on Populate. Now here you can see all those patients for which I have this diagnosis alert that contains the word diabetes. 
And from here, you can simply do a research. You can simply call on these patients to visit your office for further uh, preventative care, for further consultations, and so on. Also, you can see the number of records that are found. Uh, this report tells me that there are around 305 patients that has this diabetic alert. And also, for my further or future reference, I can save this report. So I just have to click on Save Report. And I can simply name it as Diabetes Test. And I can simply save this report. That report will be stored in this EHR. Again, if I go to my reports at the top, and my reports, I can have whatever reports that I have saved. I can simply pull them up from here, and I can uh, provide it uh, to my staff, maybe to call those patients, or maybe if I'm doing any research, this report will be very helpful for me. Um, okay, um, Cash, uh, I was just going to ask you, like, uh, when you created that report, you selected, I think, around five fields. Is there any limit to how many fields you can select? No, there's, there, there are no such limits. You can have as many uh, options that you can wish in order to pull up a report. Okay. So, I mean, since you will have a lot of uh, information in front of you, we would recommend to have only uh, selected fields that will, you know, uh, clearly identifies the report or, you know, those patients that you need to call upon and so on. All right. Okay. All right. So let me... Go back. So, you know, by simply pulling up this report through our certified EHR, you can simply meet uh, this requirement, which is uh, patients list. Now, going down to the menu major number four, which is patient reminders, and let's have a look what the requirements are. I'll simply move my cursor to this question mark, and I will see this tooltip. That would tell me the objective, which is send reminders to patient for preventative or follow-up care. And the measure is to send an appropriate reminder to more than 20% of patients who are 65 years or older or 5 years or younger. Now, also, you can see there's an exclusion, which is provider who does not have any patient who is 65 years or older or maybe 5 years or younger can always go for an exclusion. Uh, Again, the attestation would be providing uh, to denominators and numerators, denominators being uh, the total number of patients that have visited during your 90 days reporting period, and numerator are those patients to which you have generated these reminders or to which you have worked on it. So to generate a report for a reminder, we will again use the dynamic report. And again, I'll go at the top where you can see the reports. And within the reports, I'll go down to the dynamic report. So here, let's create a report of all the patients who are aged 65 years or older and that are due for a certain procedure. So let's, let's grab uh, the fields that we need. All right, so let me just uh, include the first name. And I also need to have the last name. Also need to have the date of birth and age because we'll be looking for the patients who are 65 years or older. Also, I need to have the home phone number. And for certain conditions, we will be selecting the CPT alert that I can see at the bottom of those who have attended the last webinar. Uh, we showed how those alerts can be created by using our EHR. Uh, in addition to that, there are already built-in alerts that are already included uh, within the package of this EHR. So I'll simply select my CPT alert. And once I am done with selection of my fields, I will put a filter over here. Let's suppose I'm looking for a report for those patients who are 65 years or older. So I right-click on the age field, and I'll click on filter. And I'll select, let's suppose, greater than uh, 64. That will include 65 plus. So I'll add it. And I'll hit OK. And for the report to be populated, at the bottom, I'll simply click on Populate. 
And here it will bring up a list in front of me where I will have the patients who are 65 years or older and who have a certain CPT alert. I can also see their numbers, their details. I can simply give them a call and I can remind them about this important visit so that uh, you know this CPT can be performed on them. Also, you can save this report for your future references. So let me just close it again by using this strong reporting feature of our EHR. You can simply meet this target by uh, pulling up a report for your patients who are 65 years or older or maybe five years or young. Let's go to the menu major number five, which is patient electronic access. And if I go to my details, uh, if I click on the details, basically it will bring up uh, a list of patients, uh, those that I can see in green color. These are the patients that already have fulfilled this requirement. And those that I can see in red color would be the patients for which I still have to work on because they are falling under 90 days of reporting period. So let me just move over to uh, this question mark to see what my objective of this measure is. Now here the objective is to provide patients with timely access to their health information and it should be, uh, this access should be given within four business days of the information being available. And here the measure is at least 10% of patients seen by the eligible professional are provided timely electronic access to their health information. And also you can see an exclusion which is provided that neither sees or that neither orders or creates lab tests or information that would be contained in the problem list, medications list, medications allergies, or any of the clinical information can go for an exclusion. Now, an online electronic access uh, through a patient portal or a personal health record that we call a PHR will also satisfy this measure. Now the MTBC EHR connects securely to the MTBC PHR, uh, a PHR which is a website that is delivered uh, or you know that is created and configured on the provider's behalf. So whatever the clinical health information is maintained in this EHR, that information actually gets transferred over securely to the PHR system. Now let me just show you what uh, PHR or the electronic portal will look like. All right, so here you can see this would be your main page of this uh, personal health record website, and uh, this would be you know, created and hosted on the provider's behalf. It will be done by MTBC. So over here, what we can do is you can see there your various options which are, you know, which which are helpful for the patients. What patients can actually log into the system, and they can actually get the doctor's information. They can actually create an appointment. They can see what are the insurances that the doctor accepts, the directions and hours for uh, for the office. Also, certain uh, patient education material will be available. And information would be available under this My Account. And then you can go to this Health History. So over here, if I go to this Health Summary, I can see uh, since whatever I will be documenting in my EHR, I can see the assessment, uh, you know, the patients, as soon as the patients will log into this EHR by getting themselves registered, they can see their assessments, they can see their medications, they can see their allergies, they can see the procedures, or any available immunizations. So from this online portal, you can give the access to your patients and allowing them uh, to view their information online by simply, you know, uh, enabling this feature for all of your patients. So by clicking on the, uh, by creating this online portal, all of your patients will be able to see uh, their information now. At the provider's end, it's not important for you to, you know, ask all the patients to log in and to actually view this information. At the provider's end, the requirement is 
to have such a functionality or a feature to which the patients can electronically access this information. Once you enable it, that is up to the patient's will. It's their choice if they're logging in, if they're getting this information or not. It's totally up to them. You don't have to worry about it. All you have to do is to enable that feature, which MTBC can host uh, for you on your behalf, and then they can simply browse all the relevant information that you will be actually documenting within this EHR. All right, so this goes for the many major number five, and let's go to menu number six, which is patient-specific education resources. And uh, if I go to these details to bring up this pop-up, Now, over here, the objective is to use certified EHR technology to identify patient-specific education resources and provide those resources to the patients if appropriate. Now, the measure here is to provide this material to more than 10% of all unique patients during 90 days reporting period. Now, the unique patients are, let's suppose, if the same patient visits two or three times during the 90 days, that patient will be only taken as one. And uh, there are no exclusions for that. So if you're going for this option, you must meet this requirement. Now, the education resources here means that certified EHR technology is certified to use either the patient's problem list, medication list, or lab test results to identify the patient's specific education resources. So let's have a look at the type of education material that's available in the MTPC's EHR. Uh, for that purpose, I will be, again, Going into my patient's account, I'll simply click on patient search. And uh, once I have searched my patient, I'll simply double click on the patient's name. And once I'm in the patient's record, I'll simply go to a tab that says education. Now you can see the education tab. Uh, the second last option would be for this education tab. So here, I'll click on this education, and it will allow us to generate education material because it will be connected to uh, the Adams Encyclopedia where we will have a lot of information about diseases and conditions, injuries, uh, you know, any surgeries and so on. So let's suppose that I have a patient who has a frozen shoulder and I need to provide certain education material to that patient just to inform, you know, whatever the problem this patient is facing and so on. So what I will do is I'll simply type in frozen shoulder and I'll click on search. So I will bring up, uh, you know, a series of uh, my, my search. So let's suppose I'm looking for frozen shoulder. I'll simply click on it. Now here it will give me all the definitions, uh, alternative names, what are the causes, and furthermore, it will also show me uh, symptoms, what are the exams and tests, what is the treatment, prevention, references, when to contact the medical professional. So it will contain all the relevant information that can educate a patient uh, well about, uh, you know, this, this problem. So over here what you can do is once you have pulled this report, you can simply print it out and you can provide this print copy to the patient. And also at your end, uh, you can save this by clicking on the save sign that you can see at the top. So I'll simply click on the save button and it will actually save this option for me. Later on, whenever I open up the same patient, if I go to this education a tab, it will give me all those uh, information that I already have generated and have given to the patient just for their knowledge. So within this built-in feature, let me just go back to my EHR, uh, Meaningful Use Report. So within this built-in feature, you can actually provide uh, the education materials to your patients. You can simply print it out. Any problem that your patient has, any cause that they are visiting to your office, you can you can simply pull all this information online and you can actually give it to your patients. 
Uh, so I, I just have a, a question regarding that education process. So does, do you have a numerator and denominator here? How exactly is the numerator calculated for this? For this yes, uh, of course. Yeah. Uh, basically, it is about uh, the patient visiting to the office within the 90 days, whatever 90 days that you have selected. Uh, this EHR, first of all, will show you that within these 90 days, there were 14 patients who actually visited my uh, my office. Now, okay. if I click on the details, it will bring up all those patients that are falling under those 90 days. So from here, I can quickly have a look of, on those patients to which I have to provide uh, this education material. I can simply double click on the patient's name from here, and it will also bring up the patient's record in front of me. I can again go to my education tab from here, and I can pull up, you know, the information for which the patient was visiting my office. Now, the requirement over here is that you should be doing it for uh, more than 10% of your patients. So it's just about 10% of those patients that visited your office during your 90 days reporting period. You actually have to give them, uh, you know, this, this electronic copy uh, for their reference. So uh, how would I change someone that was not, like you said, 14 members came to my office? How would I change them right. from a red to a green? Would I just have to save the education That's and right. then it would it would save? Okay. Absolutely correct. So. For instance, let me just uh, pull up uh, uh, the station over here, uh, Karen. I'll simply double click on it and uh, I'll go to this education tab again. And uh, So uh, first time, I just have to click on New. All right, so again, I will look for asthma, and I'll search it, and I'll click on it. Now here, your concern is that how the CHR will calculate that if this was given to the patient. And yes, you're right that once I click on this save button, it will actually tell the counter that yes, this information was delivered to the patient. Now once I save it, and if I go back to my counter, if I refresh it, now you can see that this patient turned in green color means that we have fulfilled the requirement for this patient as well. Okay. All right. All right? Okay. Okay, great. So let me back to my tracker, yep. and yeah. uh, let's go down to the menu major number seven. That is medical uh, medications reconciliation, and uh, let's have a look what the requirements are. Now here the objective is the eligible professional who receives the patients from another setting of care or provider of care or believes an encounter is relevant should perform medications reconciliation. And here the measure is that 50% uh, of patients who are in a transition of care should have medications reconciliation performed for their visit. Also there's an exclusion which is a professional who does not receive any transition of care during the EHR reporting period can go for an exclusion uh, for this point. So if you have 50% of your patients who are uh, you know, were received to you from another provider, you should perform medical uh, medications reconciliations for those patients. And let me just go ahead and uh, show you how this measure can be met uh, through MTBC's certified EHR. And uh, again, the same thing, either I can search the patient by going to the search, or I can simply click in the details, and uh, I will pull up the patient from here. And then I'll go to the clinical sections by clicking on the chart. Once I'm in the charts, I just have to go down to the plan of care. So I'll go down to the plan of care. 
And within the plan of care, I can see an option that says drug history at the right-hand side of my screen. So you can see the drug history right over here. What I have to do is I can simply click on this drug history, and it will actually tell me if there are any external uh, medication history for this patient or not. Now, uh, this information will be received from our integration with ShowScripts. Now, ShowScripts being the clearing house will have all this information available and all the certified EHRs. They are linked together, so if there were any external medications for this, this patients, they will be automatically included within this drug history, and it will show you if there were any external medication history for this patient or not. So once you have seen the history, and you just save your chart, and if I need to go back to my report and click on refresh, it will simply take this patient that has been taken care of. All right? Okay. All right, so going down to the menu major number eight, transition of care summary. And let's have a look what the uh, requirements are. So here the objective is the eligible professional who refers their patients to another setting of care or provider of care should provide summary uh, to the patients. Just bear with me. All right, so I'm just going to go to this question mark again. All right, so uh, any, any provider who refers their patients to another setting should provide summary of care record uh, to that setting. Now, the major is that a uh, provider who refers their patients to another setting of care or, you know, uh, that provider must provide a summary of care record for more than 50% of referrals. Uh, and uh, there's also an exclusion, which is that a professional who uh, neither transfers a patient to another setting nor refers a patient to another provider during the EHR reporting period can always go for an exclusion. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at how this can be met by using our certified EHR. Again, if you can click on the details to see whatever the patients are fallen or you can go to the patient search right at the top and you can look for the patient. Double click on the patient's name. So within the patient's record, at the bottom, you can see an option that says CCD or CCR. CCD is basically continuity of care document. Uh, this is an electronic format form uh, or a human readable format, which includes all the relevant information about the clinical summaries, about the demographics of this particular patient. Now, how this information is populated using our EHR, you just have to go to your file menu that you can see at the top left corner of your screen. Click on that, and then you can see continuity of care document option. First of all, you need to export this information in order to be saved in the patient's record. So you just have to click on export CCD. And again, you got to click on this plus line to search for that patient. So I'll simply type in the last name, hit enter, and I'll double click on the patient's name. And then I'll further click on export display. Now here it will give me all the information about this patient, demographics, insurances, any allergies, medications. If I have documented uh, in the patient's chart as a structured data, it will be bringing up all this information in front of me. And from here, at the bottom, I can actually print this document and I can give it to uh, the other setting so that they can have uh, the summary of this patient's visit. So once you simply pull up this report, within the patient's record, if you go down to the CCD and you click on it, you will have whatever information that was exported on whatever date. You're going to get all this information available within this patient's record and from here you can also print it, and you can also provide it to another setting.
So the requirement over here to fulfill would be just to pull up this report from this EHR and to provide this print to those patients if you are referring it to another settings. And this will cover this menu number 8. And for menu number 9 and 10, like I uh, explained initially, that these are basically the functionalities that are carried out at the back end through the interface. And uh, if any provider who is doing the immunizations registries automatically uh, file is generated and is submitted to uh, that local health care department. And same goes for the syndromic surveillance. So that was about how you can basically meet the many requirements by using our uh, certified EHR. And you have seen that, you know, most of them are just built-in features. And you can easily meet all these uh, requirements by using our EHR. And uh, at this stage, uh, I'll, I'll with Farhan go over with uh, the questions because we have received certain questions. And uh, please uh, bear with us so that we can answer your questions. Let me have a look into uh, the questions that were posted. So just bear with me for that, please. And uh, once again, uh, anyone who wishes to Uh, who wishes to send a question can use the panel at the right-hand side. You can see this questions option, and you can simply type in your question, and we will try to answer them right now, but it's, uh, it's just like we're short of time, so we will quickly cover some of the questions. And in the meanwhile, you can also see our contact details, so just bear with me, and I'll just transfer over the mic to Farhan so that he can answer a few of your important questions, so please bear with me. And uh, I guess I'll Thank talk you, anyway from, oh, there, there you go, for arms here, yeah. okay. All right, um, here we are with the first question. Um, one of the attendees has asked that if you write less than 100 prescriptions during the three months of reporting, are you excluded from the drug formulary measure or less than 100 prescriptions during the entire fiscal year? So the answer to the question is that yes, you are excluded from the drug formulary measure if you write uh, less than 100 prescriptions during the 90 days reporting period because uh, as you mentioned before that your reporting period is, is uh, for 90 days only and it's not for the entire year. Uh, let me just scroll through the questions. Here we are with the second question which is um, to generate a patient list do I need to save it to the to meet the measure? The answer to the question is yes. It's better to save the report um, in the EMR, but it's it's not necessary to meet the measure. So you can do so for your future reference, as Cash has clearly uh, mentioned that. So let me just see. Yeah, I, have a, I have a question on that uh, previous question. Actually, that if you didn't yeah. save it, then how would the calculator know? that it is a sent patient list? Well, it doesn't really matter. Once you click on populate, uh, it will actually show this on the calculator that you have actually pulled out a report from the EMR. So it is for uh, the populate button, not the save button. You have to actually click on populate to actually um, show that on the calculator. OK. Uh, so here we are with the uh, third question. If I see patients in a setting without the EHR, um, can I enter their information into the EHR once I get back to my practice? Yes, the information can be entered after getting back to the practice. But as far as the, the first core measure is concerned, which is uh, computerized provider order entry, it must be entered before action can be taken on the order, which means you must enter that prescription um, before the order is actually placed. For all the other measures, um, an EEP can actually enter information into the EHR any time um, they want, and there is no limitation on how soon the information should be entered. All right, guys, um, we are... Um, almost done with this webinar. For the rest of the questions, if there are any, we will get back to you via email, or if you have provided us with a number, we'll um, surely give you a call as well to try and answer those questions.
that she has. Yeah, and I, I guess okay. I, I'll just uh, repeat what uh, Farhan said. For any questions that we didn't answer today, we will just send you an email or call you and update you on those questions. And always feel free to email any other questions you have to mucoaches at mtbc.com. And I'm pretty sure Farhan and the Meaningful Use Coaches team will always be willing to answer any questions you have. And if sure. that's it, I would thank, uh, I'd like to thank everyone that attended. And thanks for bearing with us. We are two minutes of over schedule, and thanks for bearing with us for those two minutes. So, uh, All right. Farhan, if you have anything else to add, now's time. That's right. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us, and uh, we will we'll come up with another webinar very soon. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right. Have a nice bye. day. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.